the trials and tribulations of not drinking. I tell you what, Shelter's here, Back Chat's here, <laughs> and yes, you've made it in time for another instalment of 50 trays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 50 trays of fries. Oh, that's it. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. So we're going to just read out the entire portion of that for the show, and that'll be it. That's all. Yeah, we're that's doing. all we're going to do. No, we're not. Pretty short show. It's a short paragraph. We're not. So if you are a Patreon member, you would have, of course, uh, copped your first instalment of Dan's Debut erotic mm. novel, yep. 50 mm. Trays, Trays of, of Fries. fries. Yep. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, maybe you can describe it, Dan. Uh, it's just a, it's just some, a brain dump of um, activity, I guess. No, it's the <laughs> romantic story between a lady choosing between a man and a fillet of fish. Yes, that's right. Um, Isn't it the man choosing between the lady and the fillet of fish? Well, there's a, there's a lot of conflict. There's yeah, layers a lot of conflict. It. So it's almost an ultimatum. Bait yeah. from the woman to the man. It's me or the fillet of fish. Yeah, uh, tricky. If you are watching and you are wondering, yes, we have changed back to the original table. <laughs> yeah, Dan's been working away for the last, I reckon, seven days. It's taken me to put this part. <laughs> it, you, we're back to the old. Yeah, we took this whole table apart and I've rebuilt it. Hamish is joining us full time, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, let's. Just yeah, welcome. that's nice. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Good to be here. Finally, full time. Mm, bloody oath. I mean, I we had to wait till the AFLW season really. Yeah, finished off fair enough. We'd be conflicted there. Weren't yep, you? a little bit of conflict, but that's Probation okay. Probation period is finished. And yeah, geez, we're pretty close on the weekend. Just, just missed out. Bees dick, bees dick. We you got uh, done by seventy nine points. And like, if you oh, said that, a couple of decisions went our way, mate. We were there. <laughs> you, you did manage to keep Melbourne off the top of the ladder, though. Yep, that was by good. Scoring a point. Yep, that was uh, that was nice. We had so Michael Pryor, our head coach, his young boy Jackson is obviously at Brisbane, um, yes. and there was a few of them uh, that the few of the boys in there training and getting it done and the coach of the women's team said to Jackson, tell your old man thanks for that one point because it kept Melbourne <laughs> from <laughs> wow. coming first. We love that insight. Now, yeah, I won't get you go. too much trouble. You are a back chat. You know where to follow us, back chat double underscore. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au if you want to send us something and I guess we'll have to read it. Um, thanks to our supporters, our sponsors, Whippersnapper, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., and, Ching. of course, Leadable Cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Leadable Cameras. Did we get to the bottom of their $20 discount, whether or not you can just go in for $6 printing and get a $14? We, we, ha we did put the challenge out there. I don't didn't think hear from anyone. anyone's So Lydia no may have ended them, and that's why People we haven't heard from them. been going in there and Lydia's not been coming going, out. To Fleet Street, Sweeney Todd style, but Lydia's <laughs> just <laughs> taking bodies. One thing that we did promise to do last week that we didn't do, oh, yeah. no. that we will promise to do, do you know yep. what I'm talking about? Yeah, the Twenty dollars at the uh, the Thank service you. station. We should have done yes. that. Yes. No, but we're waiting for you to finish the FLW. Yeah, yeah, fair you enough. Got a bit more time now. Yeah, you got heaps to of do. time now to go so, down to the server. So it's official <laughs> now. You are permanently with back chat. Yep. First challenge, twenty dollar challenge. Yes. Done. It's called Dan's Challenge. Yeah, Dan's Challenge. You, you wouldn't know about some Dan's Challenge. Super familiar with Tell Dan's Challenge. Tell me about challenge. Dan's Challenge. No, I don't know about Dan's so Challenge. So I came in when we when we launched Back Chat two point um, I came in roaring hot with a segment mm. called Dan's Challenge. It was actually a very good concept. Yeah, yeah. It was, Dan I, would come in. I would challenge Scoey to something and, and, and I think I came out on top generally if we look well, back the at all the challenges. The first one was the licence points, the demerit points on the licence. Yeah, so we caught up licence centre live on air and we yeah. found out who had the most demerits. What was um, the second challenge we did? No, no, actually that was the second one. The first one I did was create a sporting achievement and right. mine was 5 for 16 and that's what stemmed. The second one was a licence. Licence. What was the third one? Um, oh, mate, I can't remember. We never did a third one. We never did a third two, one. Wow, two, two episodes, episodes. A roaring hot segment. <laughs> yeah. So third Just burned all our fuel. $20, 20 servo challenge. Very so, good. And that would be, I assume, just a fan a fan voted winner. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good yeah. point. Yeah, because we might have You've come in strong with the because ideas. Because otherwise it'll be a pretty subjective, my $20 is better than <laughs> yours. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very good point. So we'll mm. present that via social media and then finish that off here on the podcast. Yep. Uh, we want to say our patrons over mm -hmm. Patreon – uh, a little bit happening over in that neck of the woods. We are tearing it out properly. If you do remember, you've been listening to Back Chat for a little while. Um, synchronized drinking, very good. Mm. Um, Cheers. Cheers. Uh, we, we did start it. It was a way to support the podcast, and it still is. But we didn't have any sponsors. No one was paying us a thing to do it. And we we're coming in and spending the same amount of time we spend right now. Yep. Yep. We luckily have our great sponsors right now. Blue, Bat, Mungle River, what, Roasting, Whippersnapper, Shelter, Leadable Cameras. Yeah. So we thought it's time to give a bit more to our patrons. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I'm saying. There's going to be a bit more. And when oh, I yeah, say okay. a bit, I mean a bit. A bit more, <laughs> yeah. And, and if you've joined just purely to support us, retrospectively, you will be... Renumerated. I can't say it. What's Renumerated. That? Renumerated. Oh, please ask. Renumer yeah, Renumerated. Yeah, there you go. Oh, and, I um, found it. Found it. I never knew Dan's word. 
Renumerated. renumerated. Do you know why I was thinking? Because you can't say renumerated. I can't say anything. I, I can't say inaugural. <laughs> inaugural, yeah, that's tough. Inaugural, yeah, there you go. But cool. anyways, there will be, th- it's not like, oh, all these people are getting benefits now for signing up now. No, no, we'll look after the OGs. For yeah. instance, we just sent out 25 of our misspelt mm. merch that landed. We'd misspelt forwards. Yep. Yeah, Missed beautiful. Enough. So we just oh, sent it out to our patrons. Rads. Excellent. I first, like that. First in, best dressed, first 25, got it. So beautiful. if you do want to sign up to that, you can jump on our website, blackchatpodcast.com.au and find all the jazz there. Now, let's get into it. I've got something. Look, I've been a little bit sick, not COVID. Had yeah. A bit of cold, bit of a of flu, some fevers, no, some you, hallucinations even. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> hallucinations. A little bit of a cold. You've had something full blown. Yeah, I have. I haven't been well the last- You've been sick. Uh, slept about five hours in the last three nights. So- I'm on my last legs now. It's not good. I will record back chat and then I'm going to bed. Sure. Last night, I had some very vivid dreams and I wanted to start the show with this, given it's Halloween. Of course. Halloween here in Mount Hawthorne in the area. Had some vivid dreams. Just Dan and I, you weren't in it, unfortunately. That's Hammer. all right. I haven't been a You'll member of the there. family long enough. That's fine. So, look, I know some people like to look into dreams and think, oh, that this is what that means. Yeah. I wonder what this dream means. It all was right. a pretty extended version. Um, we're on a, a camp, some sort of getaway we ended up down at the beach together it was dan myself and nat fife um what beach um just a beach a there beach. was, there was security cameras of what happened at the beach so so dan and nat were in the shallows they were wrestling as you do mm-hmm. um scoey was on the shoreline like kind of commentating kind of like oh don't top do that. gun style yeah a little bit that and we're talking <laughs> like ankle, ankle yeah, deep that's I, top gun style <laughs> Exactly, Top Gun yeah, style. So beautiful. Dan is Maverick. Yeah, um, Ice Fife Man, is Goose. Moose. Yeah, Moose. Moose. <laughs> <laughs> Moose. Oh Moose. boy. So wrestling in the shallows. Eventually, I get involved somehow. I shirt front Fifey. He gets knocked out in the shallows. Yeah. I drag him out, save the day, pull him up the beach. We end up in these caves up, uh, up, up the back. Anyway. Uh, things lead to another. Dan ends up putting Fifey in a rear naked choke and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Anyway, wow. so we um, we wrap the body out. We call the cops. The cops rock up. It's kind of like all kosher though. It's all good. It's like, oh, Don't worry about bit it, of a, oh it's obviously, you know, a bit of a mistake's happened. It's okay. Fifey's dead. No worries. Next day, f- um, function with the Frio Dockers as you do. Of course. Um, speaking of JL, he's happy. He's fine. He's like, well, we're going to have to s- switch captains anyway, so we don't have to do that anymore. You know, five, so it's all good, Scoey. And cool. So, but I was kind of feeling guilty the whole time. I was covering yeah. for Dan. I said that I'd done it. It was actually Dan that had put him in the rear naked choke. Okay. And then I woke up. <laughs> what does that mean? It's strange. Wow. I, I, I thought I, I'm impressed by my ability to choke out in that fire. Yeah. I woke he's up, a, you know, beast. like that feeling of dread, like, oh, mm. like what have we done with the body type areas? Like, wow. That's how vivid it was. Oh my god! Have you had fever dreams? Yeah, I've had fever dreams. I'm a I'm a very very vivid. I'm a lucid dreamer. I can. Uh, it's my uncle and I share a rare ability of being able to dream, wake up, go to the toilet, get a drink, come back, fall asleep, jump exactly back, in, back into back the back dream, into it. Oh, I love get straight that. back into it. To Beautiful, pause. love it. It's one of my favorite things. But uh, yeah, I remember very vivid dreams. I had a recurring nightmare as a child. Of, How can I you about <clears throat> do you remember Big? Obviously, you remember Big Bird from um, yes. Sesame Street. Hmm. I used to live in a house that had a staircase up the middle, split left and right to go up three more stairs, thirteen stairs up the stairway, a little bit three steps either way, and then around like a, a rail, a railing. And I used to have this dream. So you lived in a haunted house. Pretty much, I had this <laughs> dream of like being down the bottom of my staircase and hearing a ticking clock, and then everything went dark, and at the like almost to the back of the house, you could see Big Bird pop his head around oh boy. the corner and I would start running up these stairs sprinting, but like my legs couldn't slipping run. Up. I'm like slipping up and I can hear the ticking clock, look around, Big Bird's getting closer, sprinting up the stairs. My legs are heavy. I've got like spikes sticking my legs into the floor. This is I had the same dream probably a hundred times growing up and I'd be getting left. I'd turn left up the stairs, try and loop around. I'd turn around, Big Bird misses me run around the corner, come back down, Big Bird misses me again. <laughs> I'm going back down the stairs, <laughs> turn around, Big Bird gets me and the stairs fall away and I fall down and I wake up in just a pool of sweat. And I reckon I had that dream a hundred well. times as a kid. Oh my goodness. A hundred times as a kid God. with like this dark t- 
ticking clock sound in the background and Big Bird getting closer and closer. It was terrifying. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. <laughs> yeah. Send us your lucid dream. <laughs> you, your yeah. reoccurring nightmares. Yeah. I won't go as much depth as mine, but I had, a, I, had a re- I had a recurring one. Yeah. It was a man in a soldier's outfit. As a outfit. kid? Yep. Yeah. And I used to, exactly the same thing, used to try to run away yeah. and I would be on moss and I'd just be oh sli- God, It's exactly the same thing. Over. I'd be oh. slipping up my stairs and my legs would be heavy. It was what disgusting. What does this mean? I, well, for me, it meant that I was a, a deep sleeper that used to wet the bed until I was about seven, but... <laughs> so did <laughs> I! So, I mean, we're going off to... When's the last time you wet the bed? <coughs> last time oh. I wet the bed was seven. A couple of weeks. I don't, oh, really? think I've, I don't think I've wet the bed in a long time, but what happened was... Huh. <coughs> well, weird. we're getting into my childhood here. I was a very deep How's sleeper. It feel? It's fine, mate. Just some deep childhood, childhood trauma. <laughs> um, no, I was a very deep sleeper. Okay. Big Bird, dude. And Big Bird will do that to me. And... <clears throat> what happened was I just used to wet the bed like I'd be asleep I'd be dreaming about going to the toilet in my dream and I'd just wake up in the morning and I'd have pissed the bed and mum obviously got sick and tired of changing my sheets and having to figure it out so what happened was we went to a sleep specialist and because I'm such a deep like I, I was in there for like a couple of hours and it was not like at night and they said just go to sleep I had some things on my head and it was like just tracking my brain waves and I was straight into the deepest REM, REM. No, that's non-REM yeah. like I was so quick to get all the way asleep and the lady was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Here's like a, a, it's almost like an electric blanket. So you put this under your, under your sheets. And so you can't really feel it, but it's like a, a big, it's almost like the size of this table. You the sleep on it. Like, but it's like a rubbery sort of thing. BYO with some type? BYO, BYO type. BYO type <laughs> Correct. So anyway, you put this under your sheets and go to sleep and it's connected to like this alarm. And so as soon as it feels moisture, it just like the alarm goes off and it's a really, really loud that alarm. It's horrific. Yeah. Anyway, and so it's designed to wake you straight up to go to the toilet. Anyway, the first night we brought it home, I pissed the bed. This alarm is first ringing. Night. First night. And I'm just fast asleep. Mum's run in. Like, it's woken everyone in the family up and I'm just sitting there fast asleep <laughs> having wet my bed. <laughs> so oh, it didn't I'm work. Fire alarm <laughs> anyway, so that didn't work. And I ended up having to do this 30-day challenge with my auntie. If you don't wet the bed for 30 days, I'll take you out for lunch somewhere. And anyway, I ended up going and it was great. 30 Did days. Did or something? No, I can't remember where. Maybe the pancake parlor or something I went. <laughs> yeah, anyway, 30 days. older than seven. No, this was like seven. Have been four no, <laughs> this was just before <laughs> I got drunk. I'll take you out for a pint. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was when I was seven. And uh, anyway, yeah, I was, uh, I was fine. <laughs> it's a no-boo seven-year-old. <laughs> but yeah, we had a couple of drinks. I mean, um, yeah, an orange not, juice. Not to half too much about the, anyway. um, you, you wetting your bed. But yeah. Because you got... Um, this is all ha- the time How many for brothers you got? You got just the two other brothers? No, Three. I got three, three brothers, yep. Yeah, that's right. So did you ever share rooms? Yeah, I shared a room with Andrew yeah, until so I was about maybe eight or nine, maybe so ten. So is he getting woken up to the sound of your mum changing your bed middle of the night? No, so she doesn't change it middle of the night because I sleep through it mostly. Like I'll wake up in the morning in a pool of my own piss. And you're looking over, hey, mate, hey, did how it I, Yeah, I did it. No, he uh, he was fine with it. Nah, cool. geez, I had some... A deep, deep childhood. Have trial. you seen Virat Kohli has <laughs> been broken into his hotel room? Oh, my goodness. This, yes. This when terrifying. they were changing his piss sheets. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the room. <laughs> What's happening here? All I saw was like a picture of like King Coley's room and he, him saying that he was highly disrespected. So he was playing he was, at the time. Yeah, he's staying at Crown in Perth, right? So is this just the maid come in? Yeah. It's a guy in a suit, though. Yeah, a guy in a suit. He's like filmed it so he's walked in and like the caption is so Lex sent this to me and she's like have a look at this Lex loves the cricket she's all into it at the moment yeah. and I thought she just sent me a video that Virat Kohli has put up because it says it's on his Instagram he's shared it anyway it says like King Kohli's room and it's like going around and showing all his stuff and his bag going and his wardrobe going into his wardrobe anyway it's just like and I was I didn't read the caption at the bottom because you know when you click the little button it all comes up I just looked at it and thought, oh, he's King Collie's room. Showing off like, his room. Showing off his <laughs> room. <laughs> Hotel room. Yeah, cool, good on you. <laughs> Open the <laughs> caption up and it's like, I can't believe this has happened. I can't have privacy anywhere. Yeah. It's Yeah, so it turns out that someone from the hotel, while they were playing um, South Africa the other night, has gone through his room and filmed it and you put reckon, it up on Instagram. You reckon he's still got a job? I wouldn't have thought no. so. <laughs> no. Is it, does it show his face, the guy? Nah, no. doesn't, doesn't show his face. face. The crown would know. There'll oh, be cameras yeah, and check. stuff. They'll know who, who did it, for sure. I don't they know apologize. what that, what, what are you, it must be a big fan. I don't know what you're going to, okay, unless he's stealing stuff. If you're just going for a look in King College room, <coughs> just a hotel room. I, yeah, you I have to be. I understand the sharing it publicly. It's like this, it's like yeah, when the weird. NRL guys, are like a mate sharing them doing coke on the table. Yeah. It's like, why are you A, filming it and B, who are you oh, sending pretty that Pretty different, to? but. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, that's, but like, yeah. it's just yeah, going to get are you, you sharing in, It's only going to get someone right. in trouble. Yeah. Right, and, right, but right. like he is, he's got like 240 million followers on Instagram. My, I got a mate whose mum works at Qantas. They've just gone to fly back to Melbourne and like the security guards at the Qantas club were having to stop 
Indian fans from bull rushing the Qantas club to come oh and say goodness. hi to him. Yeah. Like he's got his own security team. He's just He'd enormous. Be close to the most popular person in the world. Yeah. yeah so he's. Mo- I read something the other day. He's the most marketable Nike athlete on the planet. Yeah. Above LeBron James, above all of them, because he's Love that. Indian king. He'd be better than uh, Yeezy at Adidas as well. <laughs> oh, I would have thought so. Right? <laughs> Isn't he? Um, um, we want to talk about that. You, you want to have? A, you want a sour? I would love this. So a, let's <coughs> just quickly deviate. Um, Shelter's just about to release a, a, Thank you, a sour outdoor shower sour. We've been given a little. First episode of Hamish Bray Show being on permanently and we've just completely out of structure and I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, talking about me pissing the bed and yeah. now I'm having and an outdoor shower. So tonight, power. please make sure you go to the toilet before yeah, you go well, to bed. Outdoor gonna, shower probably, sour. Yeah, it's it's outdoor shower good. sour. Yeah. It's 4.6%. Cannot, cannot, cannot buy it, right? It hasn't been released, I don't no, think. but have a look out for it. If you're in... Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. So you, you have a sip of that and let us know what the you think. The outdoor Robbie Flower shower. I'm going um, to I'm gonna throw this... St- I'm just... I want to just talk about this because I'm angry. Oh. And I haven't really had any shower. Sour. No, not, not about the shower. I'm moving on to another point. Be, you've not been driving around on the horn. I have. Yeah, I have been got, driving on the scooter today, so I haven't been able. To, I can't just go ding ding. Do you have a horn on your? That's scooter? excellent, yeah, by ding, the way. Ding. That is incredible. Yeah, I'm not a big shower, a sour guy, but that's that's Are you really a big good. shower guy. I love, I love showering. <laughs> I do love that, but yeah, that's um, that's really good. Well it done, is. shelter. Okay, thank you, shelter. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in, in NBA history, nine thousand nine hundred and seventy-five to one. Is the um, is the result when a team is leading by sixteen points in the final four minutes of the fourth quarter over the last twenty five years? So, so in the last in the in the nine thousand nine hundred seventy six times this has happened, yep. where a team's led by sixteen plus points, only one team has won. Yep, in in twenty five years has come back by sixteen plus. Yep. yep, there you go. So the Dallas Mavericks, my team, lot we're on the receiving end of the one of the t- of number two, second time was the one. Three. I think I might know the one. Was it Tracy McGrady? Tracy McGrady, the one he where went he went bananas, 11, 11 points yeah. in like yeah, it, it 10 quite, seconds. Quite could have been, I'm not sure, but I'm just angry about the Dallas Mavericks today. losing close games. It happened yesterday, I think, and I'm just really annoyed about it. And I just want to write in there because I want an event about it. I didn't have anyone to talk Did you talk see the game? It. Do you know who it happened against? Uh, yeah, it was about OKC, bad team. Josh Giddy wasn't even playing. Right. Anyways, just That's want really to throw in there. I'm upset about it. That um, seems like it's against the odds. Oh bit. yeah, certainly nine and a half thousand to one. Um, on some positive, let's go to some positive news though. Backchat FC, uh, Bondi yeah, and the, the boys. team have uh, given me a bit of an update of what's happened. So have they? They are in. Uh, they're in Div Two. So right? grading's, grading's done. You know, grading's done. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all Div over Two. It. Um, it's our it's our uh, team that we own basically. Um, he sent me a text saying, "Hey mate, two weeks ago I copped a battering eight two. <laughs> And last week we drew 3-3. Three, 8-2, three. Eight, eight boys. Yeah. Come on, lads. That's <laughs> probably good. They're tanking. They don't want to be Division 1. <laughs> Understood. Win Bonnie says, I drew a penalty and scored it with 30 seconds left to draw the game. Wow. Huge So we're Bondi. Div 2, uh, which is what we wanted to be in. So we now start actual season this Wednesday. So that's this week. This is the longest grading period of the year. <laughs> the world. Yeah. We, we designed these jumpers for the lads about three months <laughs> yeah, ago. Nice. Um, so they should be one of the better teams in the division. So hopefully that's take good. home the flag is the aim. Right. Very so where do they play out of? Oh, it it's like so you said Atuka. Yeah, it's regional Victoria. <laughs> that's big. That's that's a lot of places that that could be. Why don't you just text Bondi? Text him. I'll right text now. him right now. Yes. Where do you play? <laughs> Eleven ten past. Now Eleven. I've been watching Welcome to Wrexham this week. Yep. Which is where Ryan Reynolds, Rob McElmany. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Rob McElmany. <laughs> Mackel. I think it's McElhenney. McElhenney. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, they buy. Wrexham FC, yep. uh, a Welsh team. It's the oldest ever international stadium still operational. Sure. Um, they're in the, the National League. So it goes Premier League, the yep. Championship, League One, League Two, National League. It's okay. like Divi 5. Which right? over there is still pretty good, isn't no. it? No. 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 Okay, understood. It's the lowest level of professional soccer. So... Yeah, but Pre- like, and the, you go under that, it's Amos. Like it's it's Amos. So it's yeah, okay. North so, Beach. So, and, but there's you can go all the way from National League up to Premier League. Yeah, yeah, relegation. Yeah, yeah, understood. So they bought it with the intention to bring him back up to the Premier League. Wow, okay. put some money behind it. Blah, blah blah. I don't know what happens with it. Blah blah blah. But given the Backchat FC, given what they've done with Welcome to Wrexham, spoke a little bit with our shelter lads. I, I reckon we're going to buy a soccer. I reckon we're going to buy some sort of sporting organisation here. Buy and when I say sport. buy, I mean just sponsor yeah, or like okay. get right around something. Or, bu- or buy. I'm happy to buy something <laughs> if it's worth nothing. I but mean, I don't know who you'd reach out to, but the Namibian cricket team. <laughs> 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 what do you reckon they'd be selling for? Not a whole heap. I just, 
I don't know. It just has a bit of the community feel. Yeah, yeah. a local sport team. It's a little bit off the back also of this. You're going to like this, Hammer. So yesterday I went out to the Dutch Trading Co. in Vic Park. Of course you did. For an awards night. Beautiful. Now, I was there to award um, the medal for the best and fairest player for a season for a football club. Beautiful. Bang Footy Club. Now, Bang Footy Club is a social footy club, yep. Sunday mornings at Mineral Se- Resources Park. Yep. They head down there. Anyone's welcome. You don't have to train during the week. Perfect. They've got a WhatsApp like a footy club. They've got fines like a footy club. It's a footy club environment without having to be fit or have the ability to play footy, basically. That's, that's my sort of footy team. Yeah, correct. I <laughs> Bang I FC. I've got a new member down there. So it's sort of like the West Coast Eagles this season. Oh! Hey. Oh, boy. I saw something today. <laughs> the first team in history to lose 50 games in a season, West Coast. AFL, Waffle, AFL. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done, mate. Sorry. Now, <laughs> I'm still an employer. Now, Bang Footy Club. Started yep. in Sydney. Yep. Um, the inaugural and run, still running um, best and fairest medal there is the Bolton medal, Jude Bolton medal, came down. That's not fair, is it? <laughs> it's right. So um, they've got over 150 members there, been running Brilliant. for quite some time. And Perth, this is their second season. So they've got anywhere from five through the 20 guys and girls and kids that come down and have a run around. There's a big sort of community. So I went down to their best and fairest. You know what the Brownlow medal's called? The Will Schofield medal. The Scully. Oh yeah, they've called it the Will Schofield Medal. I I went down there because I like the story of it. Yep. It's like it's it's about not mental health, but like enjoying the game and people that can't go and train at a footy club three times a week. Yeah, of course, just want to have a kick around. And they play a game. They Sounds give, like the West Coast Eagles this season. Hey yeah. again, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they give they give votes at the end of it every game. That's awesome. So they give like. They were there in tuxedos when I rocked up. They Perfect. didn't, they didn't give me a memo good. though, and I was pretty filthy because I would have worn a tux yep. down there. Anyway, I awarded the SCOE. It's got to be the first medal named after a backman, I will say that. Yep. And it was a bloody honour. So I awarded the SCOE down there to the Bank Footy Club. So it's a big shout out to them. Who'd you award it to? It was a very much a Dan Const look. Wasn't Wusher a back? Hey. Was Wusher a back? Yeah, he was. Yeah, there you go. John Wentz, <laughs> nah, I think I, yeah, in my mind, I thought he was. Like the. Like the brown load, like the league best and fair. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm sure there well, is. Well, I mean, I don't think Charles was Brown, Chaz? I don't think Charles was a, uh, <laughs> was a, a key defender. Board. Yeah. Anyway, the SCOE gets handed <laughs> out. What's up to the Bang Footy Club? I'm going down there in March. I'll see you there. there yeah, again. I like that. That's massive. Can I quickly tell you where this uh, where Backchat FC play? He messaged me back. Oh, yeah. God bless him. 11.15 at night. Stadium 34 in Mo. Moe. Moe. Mo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, it doesn't, no. have, it doesn't have a T on the end. Jaden Lesky, uh, ring any bells? Whom? Oh, yeah. There you go. Maui, yeah. Anyway, Maui. Yep. It's That's a Maui. while out from where I grew up. But An hour outside of Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. I could, um, I, I could make a trip out there. When do they play? Uh, Wednesdays. Gee whiz. That's a big, big trip for you, mate. Maui. So the boys yeah, are in Maui. It's in regional Victoria. Mo. Yeah. Mo. Mo. It's yeah. in Mo. Mo says like. Spelled M O E. Obviously. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think that's about it. Any you boys got anything over there, over that side of the table? You got anything for me, content wise? Damo's getting his mind. Damo. Can you. Yeah, just, you uh, just limbering up, fellas. <laughs> um, yeah, so as we're all aware, T20 World Cup. Yeah. Massive game, nation-stopping game between Zimbabwe and Pakistan. Of course. Right here. You do have something for us, okay. Oh, of course I do. Okay. Understood, understood. understood. So there was a tweet from the president of Zimbabwe. His Twitter account is called President of Zimbabwe. <laughs> Very <laughs> apt. I like Yeah. yeah. Take, a, take the lunch off after that one, champ. Um, <laughs> so oh, wow. Ammo's coming oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the president goes, what a win for Zimbabwe. Congratulations to the Chevrons. I assume that's the name oh, for the Zimmers. Yes. Yep. Next time, send the real Mr. Bean. So that's what he texts okay. or tweets. Tweet. Next time, send the real Mr. Bean. Zimbabwe flag emoji. Sure. Did a big, bit of digging. Um, apparently, so Zimbabwe... The country had, a, had an event. Pakistan say, guys, we'll bring the real Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, to this event. Pay us the whatever, how much it is. We'll do this. We'll action this. And the image... Seems a strange thing for Pakistan to be able to orchestrate. We got, we got Rowan. Don't worry. Yeah, we got Rowan. <laughs> Johnny worry. English himself. Yeah, we've oh. made the call. Don't worry. Yep. Um, and the image is a man. So there's these two... Oh, I know the image. I know the yeah. image. Yeah, keep going. This. 
Two Zimbabweans with a man, a Pakistani man, who is obviously not Mr. Bean, <laughs> but he's the Pakistani version. He looks so of Mr. similar Bean. to Mr. Bean. He's got the red tie, he's got oh. the suit on, but it's not Mr. Bean. And his name is Pak Bean. <laughs> so Pakistan have stitched yeah. the country of Zimbabwe up. <laughs> By sending Pack Pac Bean. Bean. It's a to diplomatic what? disaster. What have they sent him to? What have they sent <laughs> so Pakistani Mr. Bean to? <laughs> I don't know that. I didn't get that far. So just if you're just listening along at home, have a Google of Pakistani Mr. Bean. Pakistani Mr. Bean. That so, is humour. Okay. So that is Demo, I love how Thanks prepared you that. come for that. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's Pakistani Mr. Bean. It is Pac Pakistani. Bean. Pac Bean. Oh, oh wow. Shit, that's humour. Pakistani Mr. Bean, welcome. Damo, thank you very much for that. Well done, Damo. Pak Bean. is always loved. Uh, if you haven't, get down and blo- donate some blood. You've done that this week, haven't you? No, I haven't. Yeah. Haven't, haven't, haven't. Team Long Live Jace Nelson, please get involved. That's it. Um, David Boone this week. Yeah, big one. Yeah. Boone. Booney. Yeah, David Boone. He's the guest on the podcast. Well, I mean, week. that's one story to just, you've only got one thing to ask him, don't you? Uh, we'll see. We, we, yeah, we, I will say, we obviously have done the interview already. We do ask him about that. And we cannot find the answer that he gave. We have not been able to find public anyway. uh, answer of what he spoke about the beers on the plane. We yeah. asked him about it. The answer he gave, I don't think he's given before. Well, first yeah. exclusive on Backdown. Yeah, it's, it's just ludicrous. I, I like, it's just incomprehensible. You're gonna isn't have it? to listen to the podcast, Hamish. I will say that you're just gonna have to I will, listen I to will, find I out will, what I happens will. there. So, that's it for content this week. Let's get into our roving back chatters. Yep. Uh, excitingly, roaming back chat is back this week. Mm, nice. Charlie was down at the double header down at Optus Stadium. Yep. Charlie, I've seen a little bit of your work. Did you have fun down at the double header down there, Charlie? It looked like you did. Oh, some big energy down there. I think <laughs> even even though India lost, I think they were still the the biggest crowd, the most excited crowd I've ever seen. Those are Indian accents, South African accents. It looked unreal. Oh, it was unreal. Make sure you tune into social media for that. But that's roaming back chat. This is mm-hmm. roving back chat. Not with roving madness. You're a bit hot today. He's <laughs> eh? a little light one Say lighter. Yeah. Your mum for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's that was, how good was Rove back in the day? Rove McManus. What the? Used to, he, what uh, the? What the? Are you he Rove? was humour. <laughs> Hamish and Andy used to go on and do their little yeah. joke around segments. Before they were before way they were bigger big. than he ever could be. I think they were doing Caravan of Courage while they were sort of right. going with Wasn't him. Wasn't Carrie Bickmore... Carrie Bickmore might have been on there. She yeah. was like, she was she's doing straight face news. Yeah. yeah. Pre the project, he anyways, used to, they used to put a, a a camera on a random suburb and ask him to turn, <laughs> turn their the lights, lights on. on. Yeah, and I, I always that. used to watch like, geez, I hope this is our suburb. <laughs> As if it was ever going to fucking be heightened in Geelong. Like, why? Why would they have a camera? <laughs> but, but, like faced on out. Like, how would you even do that? We didn't even live on a hill. <laughs> it's like, oh, I hope it's going to be us. I hope it's going to be heightened. Oh I hope shit, it's going to be Mo. Anyway, mm. ro- <laughs> Roby. Proving correspondence or Uchuka. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uchuka. <laughs> Uchuka. Uchuka. Well, I hope it wasn't no. my house because it, oh, it wouldn't have woken me up. Yes, you did. No, this guy said Uchuka. I, I'm pretty Mate, sure I've I been to Uchuka a number of times. I've had family <laughs> friends know. there. We'd holiday there on the Murray River. I don't think you're going to trick me with Uchuka. <laughs> YouTuber. Now, yeah. okay. roving back chat. Yep. Um, we've got some of our rovers here. So F1, um, Eddie, our F1 man, gives us a bit of an F1 update. G'day boys, stoked to hear. I'm going to read these by the way. Yeah. So Dan, sure. is, you just needed to save the vocal cords, the yeah. uh, so- soothing sounds of Dan Const. Um He says, g'day boys, stoked to hear the F1 email read out. Hamish, yep. he's a tough critic, but completely fair because Thank you. fuck me, that was a long ass email. Yeah, dead right. We'll keep things shorter and sweeter by, uh, from now. By the way, Eddie G is fine. No need to worry about the last name. Thank you, I barely know how to say it myself, if I'm honest. And it's his last name. <laughs> yep. G N A N A P R A G A S A M is how you spell his last name. Eddie G, you're the man. Now, after saying he's going to keep it short, Eddie's written a good page. I would have loved, I can't <laughs> see this email, but I would have loved Eddie to just go. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's he's long. Gone. I would have laughed. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would have loved Eddie G to say, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Done. Very good. Done. No F1 oh, update. No F1 top, content. Tom Libertor, I'm a man yeah, of few I'm words. Yeah, I'm a man of few words. So yeah. Now, uh, Eddie, I'm not going to be able to read it all out, mate. Unfortunately, you haven't kept it short and sweet. He's actually written two emails. Yeah. So I'm going to condense it a little bit. Um, so um, 
basically the Mexican yeah. Grand Prix. I'm looking at you as if like, so yeah, he was, was on here. At 4 a.m. Perth. So I'll give you the Mexican morning. part. So early one in the F1 today from Mexico. In retrospect, I probably wish I hadn't woken up at shit o'clock on a fucking cold morning to that for that race. 4 a.m. here. Yeah. Yep. Is he? Is Eddie G a I Perth? I believe so. Yeah. Sure. So I had the potential to be an interesting one. Red Bull starting at one and four on soft tires Ooh. and Mercedes two and three on the mediums. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis is the only big mover of the front bunch though. Um, and I will just break that up. Lewis Hamilton just stopped speaking to Sky Sports over in the F1. Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen, my, my Just stopped speaking. Wouldn't to speak him. to the major broadcaster because one of the guys... Uh, Ted Kravitz, I Ted believe. Ted Kravitz has been shit-talking him pretty much the whole season wow. because of what happened at the end yeah, of the Yeah, of course. Last so season. just canned him. Yeah, just Marshawn Lynch style, I'm here so I don't get fined. That's and correct. Christian, well, except that they're just not going to get fined and not talk to them as well. And Christian wow. Horner as well, the principal, isn't talking to F1. And, not, and Perez, like his teammate. Yeah, great. They just, they've just culled him, not, not speaking to him, blacklisted him. Wow. I actually don't Yeah, neither do I, I don't mind it. Like, So he's won the world championship. Whether yeah. he did it in, you know, yeah. it's happened. Yep. And this there's no asterisks on it. Is there? If you look it up right now, I bet you there's no, no asterisks. No, there's not. But Correct. there's like this kind of yeah, the guy, the guy who called, made the call got sacked. And, you know, yeah, kind probably of quite obviously made it. Yeah, that's like an umpire making the wrong call in a grand final. Yeah. But you still win the grand final. Correct. Though. Stiff. Anyway, um, so they stopped speaking to him. Anyway, I'll keep moving on. Um, Ferrari came through best of the rest, but uh, for a team that early in the season looked to be a genuine threat to Red Bull, they seem to have dropped off harder than Aaron Finch at the T20 World Cup. Yep. I believe he injured himself. Did Aaron Finch injure himself in the Australian? Anyone Damn say that? Anyone watch the cricket at all? Nah, <sighs> none of this. Australia won. I know that. Eddie, yeah, they did. They did. Eddie G throwing zingers out there. <laughs> oh, Eddie G. <laughs> Who's Eddie G? <laughs> yeah. Who's Eddie G? We've lost him in the. You've lost it in the email. The one shining light of the day. Our boy Danny Rick copped yep. a somewhat harsh ten-second time penalty for an ordinary lunge up the inside of Yuki Sonoda. He mm. sent it. Following which, old mate went on a vintage tear through the field, overtaking his knob of a teammate, Lando Norris, and then Fernando Alonso, and then Esteban Ocon, before pulling out a lead to a strong finish of seventh. I mean, it pretty much sums up Daniel Ricciardo's year. Seventh is his best he's done this year. Mm. Hasn't been a good year for Daniel. No, it hasn't. Anyway, that's it. Is Thanks, that, Eddie G. Is that a paraphrased actually, Eddie? Hey? That's a very heavily paraphrased oh, yes, Eddie G. Yeah. yeah. Now, you said that I was a harsh critic, Eddie, and I'm going to give you a little bit more feedback. Short and sweet means short and sweet, first of all. If we're paraphrasing this, I'm, obviously I haven't read the email. And I'm it's, not, like, it's very long and I like I just chopped it to bits there. Just do, it, do the chopping yourself. Read that to yourself and think, what, what, would, what would Hammer say? Because <laughs> if Hammer's sitting there and he's a little bit bored about reading something, because I don't really like the F1. I'm not a massive fan of it. I haven't watched it a whole heap. That's what Eddie's job is, to make you... In, he wants... He yeah, wants, you want me, Eddie, yes. to enjoy F1. Now, I don't like it that much. I know Danny Ricciardo, I know Lewis Hamilton, I know Max Verstappen, and that's pretty much it. So if I'm reading that and getting bored, which I am, and I'm not even reading it... <laughs> I need you to lift your game. Yeah. If you want to be roving, you've got to do better than that. So, yeah, there's your feedback, Eddie. Take it on board, As Eddie. Take it on board. Just like fines, no um, no replies from you, mate. Just yep. expect the next one to be a little bit better. Yeah. Thank God the F1 season doesn't have any races left. Elliot Friedman, our man in the ice hockey, sends Yeah, through, uh, love this. So Come this on, is, Elliot. Uh, I think our genuine reporter. Yeah. 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 It's like the Eddie McGuire. He, he, he yeah. never messaged me back, the real one. No, so. so, I guess yeah. we don't know yet. No news is good sure. news. Fellas, the NHL season is underway. And I've had some exciting news come across my desk. The <laughs> NHL is exploring options to host, presumably, a pair of games in Australia in yep. 2023 or 2024. Yep. Did hopefully, I read this last week? Hopefully the Coyotes come no, out. No. Okay, I don't good. think the Coyotes are coming down. <laughs> I don't think at, they would either. As p- They're probably closest. <laughs> as part South. of their global series, the NHL is attempting to play more games outside of North America to grow the game, which this year includes a pair of games in Prague <laughs> and mm. a pair in Finland. Beautiful. So if this goes through, hopefully Nathan Walker will be involved and yep. you guys can have the inside running for some media passes and get to see it firsthand. Who the fuck's Nathan Walker? I'm sure he walks. I reckon he, walks. he probably works with Joey Friedman, maybe his best mate. Who is Nathan Walker? You know, no uh, Big Walker, Texas, that we call we, uh, Oh, do we call him Texas? <laughs> Another. Of course. Zingers over here to my left. <laughs> Dad just come with a pub <laughs> full of yeah, KFC one zingers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Zinger Burgess. Now... Oh, He's an Aussie yeah, player. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> Charlie. Is, is he Australian at some point? I would have thought. Born Australian professional ice hockey forward. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Welsh Australian. There's a combo. Another fasc- fascinating story unfolding right now is the development of a young defenseman. Shout out, back, back, back chat. 
Backman Club. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shout out. Um, playing for the Montreal Canadiens, who may have one of the funnier names and stories in sports today. He's hooked me with this. Yep. I would like you... See, this is the sort of interest that yeah, somebody this, doesn't this, care this, about this, the NHL. I love the NHL. Not okay. really. I anyway. would like you to both to try and pronounce his pronounce his name and yep. I've read that wrong no cheating pronunciation at the bottom of this email so the correct pronunciation okay um, that is I'm going to go with Arby Yezak uh, that's that hang on a minute so you've gone with what Arba Yezak Arba Yezak I'm, I'm going to go with Arba I think that's Arba um, I'm going to go with Arba Ziyak Okay. Okay. It is spelt first name A R B E R. I'm going to go with Arba. Couldn't be anything else. Yeah. (laughs) The last name is X H E J A K. (laughs) That could be anything. I'm going to go with like a bit of like like um is like like Z like like Z Z Jack Z Jack. So I've gone Z Yak. Oh, have you? So as in like the Yak? Yeah. Don't say. You said Z. I'm going to go with X X J. Extra. Yeah. I yeah. understood. Silent. Like ah, but extra. Yeah. Yep. X could be silent. His nickname is Wi Fi because his name looks like a generic Wi Fi <laughs> password. <laughs> That's good. This 21 year old kid was working <laughs> at Costco's just two years ago wow. without a realist chance of making it into the league. Wi-Fi. Going undrafted, attending the Montreal training camp this year, he proceeded to make a name by himself for fighting an Ottawa player in the rookie tournament Huge. and then getting the best of an Ottawa veteran in a scrap in a preseason game. Beautiful. He made um, it onto the main team where he has since scored his first goal Huge. beaten up a legit NHL enforcer oh, and done yeah. it all with a smile on his face he's got a real good chance of sticking with Montreal Canadiens <clears throat> and it'll be a fun year to watch so thanks for your time love Elliot. that love that Elliot that by the way Eddie G is how you hook me onto an email now <laughs> yeah. a few things about that oh, well, um, I'm not going to believe what the pronunciation is well obviously way. I'm not going to we'll get to that in a second uh, first of all the Montreal Canadiens what a like Come up with something better for your name. The Canadians. Like, it's just a city in Canada, isn't the it? The Sydney Australians. Yeah, the Sydney Australians. What a dumb name. Come up with something better than that, <laughs> firstly. Secondly, have you ever watched an NHL game where they fight one another? Yes. It's awesome. In the rules that you're allowed it's to... It's outrageous. You're allowed a one-on-one fight. It's like a part... Of, it's like a stop Yeah, it's a stop it's a, it's a You're allowed stoppage. a one-on-one fight. The ref comes up. It, like, they, the refs try their best to not... Like to They're disengage not allowed to get you in before. before they hit the ground. Yeah, so you try. They try and disengage like verbally. Don't do it. Don't. As soon as they start fighting, the refs just watch your skates. As soon as one, as soon as, soon as the skate leaves the floor, fights over. But like gloves really? down and allowed to just fight. It's awesome. Love that. It's awesome. Uh, it is. It's good. Have anyway, what's yeah, yeah. Uh, what's Arba's Arba Z Jack first name? Yep. Arba Arba. Yep. Correct. We're on. So I've said Z Yak. I think I said Zajak or something. I said yeah. X Jar. X Jar. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jack I. No. <laughs> no, no, it's Jack no, 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 no. It's, just reverse, it's just reverse. It's just reverse. No, it's Jack Eye. Oh my god. J a c k e y e. Jack Eye. Oh my god. Don't know what's happening. Now. Arba Jack Eye. There you go. Goodness me. Wi Fi. What a name. Leighton Goldsworthy. Uh, that was very, very good, Elliot. That's by you. the way, Leighton Goldsworthy is our golf reporter, isn't he? He is. Mm. Back chat <laughs> golf report. Hey BC crew. Happy to be back with a weekly golf report. We have a new world number one. Yeah, we do. You already know this. See, this is the thing you know about these. Rory McIlroy has ascended to the promised land once again with a Mm. win in the PGA Tour in South Carolina this past week. His career has unfortunately suffered from constant comparison to the cat, Tiger Woods. The cat? Yeah. I've never heard of Tiger Woods being called the cat. We have now. Leighton Goldsworthy is referring to Tiger Woods as the cat. But he is not – maybe they refer to – Maybe they referred to old mate as the cat. Rory? Yes. Uh, look, I'm not following the... I'm not, no, no, the finger's no. not on the pulse that much. But he has not left the top 20 of the world golf ranking since 2009 when he was 20 years old. Yep. Rory Roy needs to be... To win the Masters to compete, he complete his Grand Slam of claiming every major title. Yep. Long into blue bet and get yourself some odds for him to complete it next year. There you go. Wow. The WA Open was hosted at the W. Oh, t- there yeah, better be yeah, some humor yeah. in here, I tell you what. Lates. <laughs> the WA Open was hosted at the WA Golf Club in Yokine this week. I was able to get out there over the weekend and watch the action. Huge. The course was looking absolutely pristine. I like it. With those who could keep their ball out of trouble shooting some very low scores. Mm. But it was. Diane Digger Lawson from Geelong, who stormed to 21 under three rounds. Nice. For the eight shot lead going into Sunday. But golf is a game that will make even the coolest customers sphincter tighten up. <laughs> this is why I'm a big fan of Leighton's. With his lead dropping down to just two with a few holes to go. But he clutched up and hold on for a big win with plenty of shelters to celebrate. Yeah, brilliant. Finally, just an idea for a new bracket challenge could be. 
best stadium food item? Been a few hits and misses mm. over the years and would be interested to know how everyone shakes out on it. Butter, chicken, fries at Optus for me are a I've solid number one seed. Before. Wow. Butter, chicken, Butter, fries. chicken, fries. I'll tell you Charlie, what's not a number Charlie, one Charlie, seed. Charlie, you go there a fair bit. I, the I've, s- yeah, you I've seen these before and I've never tried them because they look haunting. They're a number one seed, Butter apparently. If chips. Leighton likes them, I'm going to go all in. What were you going to say? The tell what's not a number one seed. Those chicken, that, the crispy chicken that we had the other night at the cricket. The bo- I've got iron guts. I'm, I can eat anything in it. I could eat this can right now and I think I'd be <laughs> fine in the morning. But I got a message from a few of the boys that we were there with and no good. No good. Just, Ham, so, Ham, are your guts all right this morning? Yeah, mate, I'm fine. Uh, we've been shitting all day and just... <laughs> oh, the crispy chicken. The crispy chicken went through them. So that's a solid low seed. That's a solid low seed, yeah. I've got to be honest, I bought a pie at the, at the cricket. Um, yeah. Shocking. Had been in there since... <sighs> oh, we, the game was on Tuesday. I reckon had been in yep. there since the Thursday before. <laughs> yep. It was rock solid. Yeah. Ships... Average. Cold. The only good, the only redeeming quality, in my opinion, of a of a stadium pie is they're often like not super hot, but yep. not like they're just a bit can above lukewarm. I can knock them off in two or three bites. Just mm. beautiful, temp- deleting temperature. I, I, like I remember to say. Um, Chicken Treat had stands at uh, Subi, oh and you get the the hot chicken roll, which is like that sweaty. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, yeah, had that mayo covered Subi. Yeah, they had it at Subi, and wow. you get the hot the hot chicken roll from Chick Treat. That was very good. Yeah, yeah see, I like it. Like a little implant of like a if there was like a little hungry Jack's bar. Like there's there was one at, yeah. uh, at Lath Lane for a yeah. while there. Right. Just strictly serving whoppers and fries. I think. Now yeah, a quick little blue bed update. That's it for our roving reporters. Thank you very much. Thank Actually, you, take the um, feedback on board from Hamish. Yep. Yeah, yeah, please. Big Eddie G. Eddie yeah, G. Tighten that up. Either. either. Inject a little bit of humour in there so that makes me laugh and intrigues me or just make it snappy and informative. Thank you very much. Blue Bet. Do you, do you want to speak about this or you want me to Blue, speak about it? No, so Blue Bet have come to us and they said, boys, we want to look after your listeners. Yep. Of course they do. Uh, whether you uh, bet on the Melbourne Cup or not, we're going to make sure someone is a big winner. Huge. So basically they're putting on the bets for us. Yep. Sweep. A sweep. We're, we're going to pick out 24 people who have been entering through our website. I don't know if it's – however many horses there are. Yeah, so there's, uh, so there's 24. Makes okay. sense. Yeah, there's 24. Is that and confirmed? The, yeah, yeah, and then there's like yeah. some extras in case um, – There'll be some scratchings tomorrow yeah, yeah. just in case, yeah. Right. So basically there's a, there's a link on our, on our bio and stuff and we did a, a little video about it. You can enter through the website. We're going to pick tomorrow morning by uh, 10 a.m. Perth time. So that's uh, 1 o'clock uh, Eastern. Mm. Picking 24 names and you'll be linked up with 24 horses. We're going to chuck 20 bucks on every single horse in the field. You'll get assigned one of those horses and you will win. So winner yep. takes all. Whoever wins, wins. It's it's That's it's nice. like the the premiership bet that we did with the AFL, except yep. with the horses. That's Beautiful. Great. Yeah. So, so Melbourne Cup live sweep, 10 a.m. Instagram Tuesday. So the the cup runs at three. Yeah, there Eastern. and thereabouts. Yep. So that's mm. 12 o'clock here, Western. So we're doing it at 10 a.m. You'll get your horse, 20 bucks on it from Blue Bet and Back Chat. Yep. Winner takes it all. Huge. Yeah. We bloody love Blue Bet. You said that we read it. It's time for this. You said that we read it. That's bloody great. Isn't it? Daniel, Could are I your vocal cords woke? Are they awoken? Are they warmed? Please? Do you yeah, want another one, Dan? Yes, please. Oh, we get two of those, please. Sorry. Yeah. Because not only... Interrupting. Uh, no, nah, it's fine. Because not only are uh, you about to give us some of your best you said that we read it, but they are continuing to warm up for the end of this episode. Yeah, here we go. When you get to read another paragraph out another of bit. 50 trays of fries. Yep. I'm warming up to a Bacchus at the moment. I'm on did, the way there. Did so- <laughs> did I've left Melbourne. I've crossed the West Gate. We were very aroused last week. Before we, um, before we start reading these out, did somebody contact us saying that they tried to – oh, this might be only you send it where you're in. Try to purchase um, we'll see it. Hammer's book. Hammer's granddad's book. Oh, yeah, there we go. I yep. don't know, is it in you send it where you read it? If it's not, remind no, me. I got sent it on. You got it. I got the Instagram message from uh, Miss Matheson, I think. Yes. Who uh, who went on to try and purchase my pop's book? Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't haven't had yeah haven't had any follow up from that whether she's got the book or whether she's read the book. But uh, <laughs> yeah, in. I've had someone reach out saying they've tried to go on and purchase, which is weird because it's free. This is terms of terms of repayment. Yes. A <laughs> debut novel by Ian Brayshaw. Yes. Is it, he's one and only? Uh, he's know? he's read he's written like he's authored about thirty books, I think. Oh, but good. all of them are sports. Cricket just, novels, just no erotic. No, he hasn't. He hasn't dabbled in. Is, the it, is there like an association books. for erotic uh, novel writers? Dan, is it? Yeah, the Erotic Writers Association, the EWA. Great, yeah. very supportive. 
Yeah, it's huge. Great. Yep. All right, you said it, we read it. Let's get into it. Um, thank you very much to Leadable Cameras who sort us out here. If you want to head down there, Oxford Street, Leadable, Lydia and the crew will look after you, mm. whatever you need, cameras, lighting, cables, printing. Yep. They've got the lot. Drones. You can send down there. Tell them Scoey sent you. Tell them Backchat sent you. $20 off per person. You need a new person. pair of binoculars, by the way? Oh, I do need a new pair of binoculars, Go down actually, to Leadable Cameras. So I sell <laughs> might just go back to back to back with the $6 printing <laughs> and just print some cash someone every day. Said, someone go down there, please. There's enough of you listening now. Yep. Someone yeah. please head down to Leadable Cameras this week. Just get something under 20 bucks. Go and say... Lydia said, if I ordered something for under 20 bucks, you'd give me some cash back. Yeah, <laughs> just say, I, apparently, if I come down here courtesy of Backchat, which I am, I get $20 off. Or no, I get $20 back. Yeah, but you have to purchase and then, um, something. Yeah, you purchase can't just something. go down there and get a $20 note. Yeah. <laughs> no, obviously. <laughs> but if I go down there and purchase something for $3, yes. I'm expecting a $20 back. They sell like $17. Little, little you don't get, you don't get $20. You get yeah, so hang on a minute. Back. I just get the $20 note. But I give him three dollars, so I say, "Here you go. Here's three dollars for what costs three bucks these days? A, a, an eraser, nothing. An ara- yeah, what's the Leadable Camera House? Why are they selling an eraser? They're that selling erasers at Leadable Camera House. Okay, sure, they're selling erasers. I'll buy. I bought one. Three dollars. We love to support eraser. Leadable Cameras. <laughs> Just get down there and support them because they support. Get us. your twenty bucks it. back. Okay, here we go. From True. Travis Fitzgerald, run with Dan Cons. Hi, team. I saw Dan at a grocery store in Perth yesterday. I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask photos or anything. Thank this you. This is Dan just writing in an email by himself. <laughs> he said, oh, like you're doing now? I was taken back and all I could say was, huh? But he kept cutting me off and going, huh, huh, huh? And closing his hands shut in front of my face. I walked away and continued with my shopping and I heard him chuckle as I walked off. When I came to pay for my stuff up front, I saw him trying to walk out the doors with like 15 Milky Ways in his hands <laughs> without paying. The girl at the counter was very nice about it and professional and was like, sir, you need to pay for those first. At first, he kept pretending to be tired and not hear her, but eventually he turned back around and brought them to the counter. When she took one of the bars and started scanning it multiple times, he stopped her and told her to scan each of them individually <laughs> to prevent any electrical interference. That's quoted, by the way. Yeah, and <laughs> properly as it's written. Electrical inferference. <laughs> Thank Gosh. you very much. And then turned around and winked at me. <laughs> I don't even think that's a word. After she scanned each bar and put them in a bag and started to say the price, he kept interrupting her by yawning really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Weird interaction, hoping to get Dan's thoughts on it. Firm regards, Travis. Very firm. You are you well? You yeah. all good, mate? That's pretty shit house behaviour. This isn't fines. You can reply. I like. I don't like Milky Way for one, and I would have brought my own bag. Cause there's so many flaws to this story. <laughs> I take back Travis. what I said about Dan writing his own thing. <laughs> can you imagine? The, huh? Huh? Uh, I was talking about huh? 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 huh, huh, huh. And closing his Close. hands shut in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> Dan, come Dan, on, come on. You're better than that. Okay. Daniel Marsh, okay. rugby league correspondent. G'day, lads. Marshy here. This is, first this ever is call to it. We speak it. Regular oh, contributor, sponsor, yeah. long-time listener, and NRL aficionado. Okay. Throwing my hat in the ring Good to stuff. be your NRL, NRLW, and you, UK Anna. Super League contributor oh, for the show. Shit. Understood. Please You're see my high-level points of why I should get the role so you can call off the hounds. Okay, you ready for this? Do you want me to give you my initial thoughts? Yeah. Aficionado, tick. Love that word. Really, Great. really nice. Okay. NRL, NRLW, beautiful, covering all bases. But UK Super League, did he say? Yes. Yeah. That's a wide net, so he's going to have to make it really stick. Okay, okay. Here are his points. I live in Sydney, which is NRL heartland. Isn't it? When this did. leads to the potential. Uh, this leads to the potential to emulate Charlie and do roaming NRL at State of Origin or SOO industry abbreviation. Haven't heard of it. Understood. Don't even know what our state of origin is, to be honest. I'm a Western Red <coughs> supporter, so very impartial with my uh, summations of the game. I'd like to have a flutter on the game and I'm happy to assist your listeners with sending Blue Bet Broke. We like that. Yeah, I call it as I see it and I won't give your knowledgeable listeners any fluff. Uh, NRL is multifaceted. We mm. have the on-field brilliance and the Monday court hearing from the post-game shenanigans. I will cover it all. And lastly, the World Cup, or Aussies who family has a loose link to Minow Country Cup, is currently in, um, on in the UK. Let me add it. Exclamation point, exclamation point. Happy to discuss further in person as I'll be in Perth this week, 2nd to the 8th of November. This is my dedication to the role. Yours in rugby league, Marshy. So Marshy, I will say, um, Sports Gear Oz. This is Marshy. Ah. Sports Gear 
Australia, yes. sportsga.com.au. Yep. If you can remember, we did the best worst Guernseys in the competition, brought to you by Sports Gear Australia. Yep. This is Marshy, Very owner good. of. So, Marshy, firstly, you started off well. Aficionado, as I said, love it. Threw a wide net out, but Sydney, tick. That is a rugby state. I don't really know much about rugby, so when you're throwing stadiums and teams at me, you, that's sort of falling on deaf ears a little bit. Um, love the dedication to the Aussies in the World Cup, so that's yep. a big tick for me. Uh, and the double exclamation mark just shows your enthusiasm. Right. So I'm all for Marshy. So you're happy with Marshy? I'm happy with Marshy's pitch, I yeah. thought you were going to write it off. Not nah, a lot of humour there I'm happy with Marshy. Not a lot of humour there from Marshy. And look, he did throw me a little bit like trying to be roaming Charlie. Like, that's not your role at the mm, moment, Marshy. Right. So One try and come time. up with your own thing. Um, but consider but yeah. yourself hired. But consider yourself hired. I like it. I've, I've got a little question. So I'm a Western Reds supporter, so very impartial with my summations on the game. Well, so it's this year. year to, well, like Western Reds is like Western Australia. They don't play in the yeah, NRL. Well, because do year? they still exist? No. That's, that's right. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. I was just wondering. He was being to like NRL funny, which... That's oh, Hey, but that's not me. I'm not an NRL, NRL guy. So as I said, on deaf ears. Well, I'm Marshy. Right. You're accepted. Well, Marshy, right. This work. is from Seamus Brady. Uh, subject, Warple. Hey, Dan okay. and Will yeah, and oh, Hammer. Big fan this. of the podcast, lads. I was wondering Hammer. if either of you... piece of shit. I was wondering if either of you had heard of the online game called Warple. <laughs> what? Huh? Uh, huh? Uh, 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 uh. The online game called Warple, mm-hmm. where it's like Wordle, but instead of words, you have to guess it, a legend AFL footballer. Yep. And then you get clues to get it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I recommend the game and have been guessing Scoey every day for the last month, but he hasn't <laughs> been on it yet. I hope you guys give it a go. Keep up the great work. Yep. Seamus. Well, Seamus, you've gone astray because they're current players that are on there, I'm pretty <laughs> right. sure. <laughs> they uh, are. I'm pretty sure. So you're really throwing yourself uh, down the garden. So this there. is like Wordle. I've seen this, and you, you sort of guess Excellent a player's game. name. It gives you it like gives you the, state where they play. It gives you uh, position, height, date you, of birth. Yeah, they were drafted. Yeah, they were drafted. Um, and so like it, it give you ups, downs, orange, yellows if the good. states. It's great. So I don't know my, how we can integrate it into back chat, but it is good. My first guess was always Christian Petrarca because he's 187, which is average height. He's a midfielder, which most players in that so you just most of them are it's you i think yes victorian so it's close to most states and most teams are there so it's a good one okay, okay. very good see petrarca was always my guess ryan proud live podcast uh hey will dan and ham actually, has he actually said this actually said that long time listener yeah. first yeah, time email well, what are your thoughts on doing a live podcast from shelter brewery over summer mm. it would be a great opportunity to collaborate with your southwest sponsors yes. and have a q a slash fines from a live crowd Plus, who doesn't love listening to blokes talk shit while sinking pints on the beachfront? Do enjoy that, yeah. Point. Cheers, Great point. <laughs> Cheers Rowdy, what an email. Good work, Ryan. Yeah, oh, I'd be definitely on the agenda. Um, we are heading down there for... 2nd of December. Southern River Band are playing... DJ Genga. DJ <laughs> Genga getting naked. Gets his kid off. Nude. Um, so Southern River Band, if you haven't and you're listening and you like Southern River Band, it's what we play over on the Shelter Footy Cast. They are playing on their national tour down at Shelter. You can get... Uh, tickets shelterbrewing.com.au I would just sneak in for some tickets there because I hear they are selling relatively fast super fast Dan and I will be there Mm -hmm. Hammer will be there give me the date 2nd of December I'm there Hammer will be there got a wedding the next day but I'll be there Damo and Charlie will oh how about a roaming at at shelter okay very good you you may never come back if you go roaming in the green room with the Southern River Band boys (laughs) Charlie may just pick up being a band member and what about you Damo can make room in the schedule. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Done we're there. Lavinia Florison. A wedding. Hey, lads and ladies. I went to a wedding on the weekend and someone had gifted the bride and groom a blown glass exact replica of Daniel Ricciardo's shoe from when he won some big race. I can't remember which one. Wow. But this glass... Oh. Uh, keep going. But this glass shoe is worth thousands of dollars. People were filling it up with beer and doing shoeies with it. Um, it was also giving Cinderella vibes. I have attached a photo of a friend with the shoe. Anywho, I reckon uh, one of those would look pretty nice up next to Dan's 5 for 16 trophy. You should definitely invest. Thanks for the content. Loving the pods. Live. A couple of things live. Now, I'm sorry to ruin the thousands of dollars thing, but these were released when Daniel Ricciardo released his wine. So mm. it was a limited release that he did with the first release of his, uh, they were like DR3 wine or whatever he called it. He did like a collaboration earlier this year. Now, the moment I saw them out, I text Daniel. Okay. Now that it's now that's been revealed that we are in fact in contact with Daniel Ricciardo. Mm-hmm. 
I, I look on Nick Nananui's um, story on his Instagram and I see a glass Daniel Ricciardo shoe with yep. him holding a Daniel Ricciardo wine. Yep. Nick Nananui. Yep. And I text Daniel Ricciardo a screenshot of Nick Nananui. Mm. I said, how the fuck does this fucking bloke have this? Yep. How have you not sent one to back chat? Are you fucking kidding me? Yep. Ricciardo sent back, sorry, mate. Lift you off the list. I'll send one now. Promise you, I'll, I'll bring it up. When was that text oh, message? 12 months ago. In the mail, I think. No. So, one, they're not thousands of dollars. They're just with the wine thing. Two, I asked for one. We don't have it. Mm. And this is grow- <laughs> This is adding to the growing list of things that I don't like about Daniel Ricciardo. Mm. And that's one of them. Oh, great. I thought there was more. No. Oh, there is. I've already... I've, yeah. I've, I've voiced some of those already on this podcast. Sure. Lewis Constable. <laughs> Louis. Louis. That would be your son. Yeah, I don't like this. Well, I mean, I don't not like it. It's just, it's just odd. That's my son's name. Boys love the podcast. He can't write. He's four. Uh, boys love the podcast and have listened to every episode. I know this is all academic and hypothetical, but these Frio players that have been interviewed on your podcast are delusional when they talk up their chances had it been a WA Derby Grand Final in 2015. Here's why. After nine rounds, Frio were 9-0. and o. Um, at 152%. After that, they went 2-5 and five against top eight sides at 77% for the rest of the year, including their two finals. Mm. In those two wins, their opponents' inaccurate goal kicking played a big part. Mm. Uh, 12-10 defeated 10-18, Richmond MCG, and 10-9 defeated 7-18, um, Sydney at Subiaco That's without Franklin, Jack yes. and Parker, uh, who would go on to lose at home by 26 to North Melbourne the next week. Frio were cooked the Eagles over the same time span were seven and three at 126% against top eight sides and coming off great finals wins over the Hawks and Ruse. Frio's chances would have been minimal and it probably would have been the easiest grand final to get tickets to in history. What could have been? We're going to take that one on notice and keep going because we're going to get through these and we haven't mm-hmm. done fines yet. Jason Ashton, Tales from the Shit. Sky. Yes, sure. We're skipping one. Are we? We're certainly not. Okay. What 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 oh, are we? Josh that. hype guy Hamish, I like uh, this. Can we read that? I like that. We just go for it. Is that the same? No, one just sorry, saying? but let's let's move on to Jason You're Ashton. Right. Tales from the sky. Uh, <laughs> greeting piglet, greetings piglets. Hope you and your families <laughs> are well. I'd also like to say now, Dan, please pass the rest of this email off to Scoey or someone else with a loose grasp on the English language. If you feel <laughs> the need, I've dribbled on a bit. Uh, bit this week and may be a bit beyond you. Do you want me to, do you want to pass it off or no, you got it? Screw you, Jason Ashton. Here we go. Off the back of my little drive-by last week, citing Dan's lack of common human decency, mm. I've encountered an act this evening, an act far more arrogant, nay, heinous, <laughs> and with a blatant lack of regard for the fellow man than beeping someone on the road 3.6 microseconds after the light changes. That's mm. lightning quick. <laughs> that is really quick. That's anyway, a, keep going. Dan, that's sort of why yeah. Dan operates. I race off from work. I have a wedding for a long-time school friend back home in South Australia, which requires me to catch a flight. Air travel being notorious for bringing out the absolute worst side in people. I board already my already delayed flight. And wouldn't you believe it, free upgrade to an exit row. Yeah. Brilliant. Good things do happen to good people. The lovely hostess whose forehead has been Botox within, within an inch of its life must have seen my athletic 6'3 frame and friendly smile and felt generous. The weekend can only go up from here, right? This Probably could have left the Botox bit out, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This, gentlemen, is where our tale takes a wicked turn. Mm. I find my seat, middle of the row, yuck, but as more and more people file onto the plane, the window seat remains empty. Could it be... Have I stumbled my way onto the unthinkable? The double exit row seat. And then I look up and lock eyes with a massive unit walking sideways down the aisle with watermelons (laughs) under the arms and tattooed up to his eyeballs. (laughs) I knew instantly that he was bound for the vacant space next to me. Is that you? Fuck. It wasn't wasn't me. (laughs) After about one and a half hours of being bent over and forced into the strangest contorted position you've ever seen, trying to avoid angering the beast of a man parked next to me, (laughs) And doing that weird elbow wrestle thing you do for the armrest. I feel some strange tingle. I feel Mm. a strange tingle. Where do you ask? In the last place you want to feel a tingle when on an aeroplane. No, not there, you sick fucks. Nurse in a Bacchus. (laughs) On the the end of my nostrils. (laughs) This behemoth, who I can only... Oh, gosh, this is so so crude. Uh, This behemoth, who I can only assume has been surviving on a diet solely consisting of KFC and energy drinks, has dropped his guts (laughs) mid-flight without so much of a sorry champ or an excuse me, pal. 
this has to be the absolute lowest thing a human being can do to another person in the intimate confines of a plane. Anyway, I was mid-episode of your Mickey Barlow chat, what a fucking legend, by the way, and thought to myself, I only feel a few times this year and I've managed to encounter this breach of the Geneva Convention on a flight. (laughs) AFL players must see some downright ludicrous behaviour on the planes with their busy travel schedule. So I would love to know, lads, what's the most fucked thing you've seen happen on a plane? And do you have any travel hacks from your playing days for the average chump like myself to make flying a more pleasant experience? A pleasure as always. Stay firm, Mr. Mioff. Mr. Mioff, yeah. Firstly, calm as a bitch, mate. And to go around and just say that the air hostess has got Botox in her forehead that's the size of whatever you said, that mm. probably serves you right. Yes. So, you know, what goes around comes around, champ. Um, do you have any weird things to happen on a plane or are you just not giving him the... No, nah, I don't want to give him the time of day okay. after that. <laughs> okay, I've just had enough. Uh... Oh, I only thing I can think of it wasn't really that fucked up. The, the, the pilot of the 2018 grand final plane that came back came out with an open bottle of champagne from the yeah, from cheers the, from, the, uh, <laughs> from the cockpit from the cockpit and was pouring <laughs> us all champagne. That's nice. Who's flying the fucking plane? <laughs> yeah, airplane. I have. Do, I did want to write him off just then, but I actually have quite a funny yeah. story. Go on. I was in the toilet on an international flight, taking a piss and hit serious turbulence. Like I've just closed the door. I've just started. The streams just started and the, like you can hear the captain, please be seated, like we're about to encounter some turbulence. And I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. Two seconds later, I am just like hands on the wall. I'm just like, oh, I'm just... <laughs> you're trying to or you, yeah, I'm still going. I'm midstream, I can't. I got one hand one hand on the wall, one hand on the uh, the little fella and then we're going from there. I was not nursing it back to that point, so it wasn't that big, but... <laughs> Anyway, geez, I've deprecated myself today, haven't I? <laughs> talking about pissing my pants, talking about the anyway, wet the bed. Yeah, the Josh. Only, the oh. only thing I can think of is uh, causing an emergency landing and making it fly to a different city, but that's yeah, I've told that story before. Josh, hot guy, Hamish, last one. Hey, gents, just want to shout out Hamish for his quality story, his special comments, and most of all, his background hype comments. Yeah, shit, yeah. The little oh shit yeah in the background. Of wow! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> of the you send it. Wasn't that fortuitous? It was a bloody crack up. Wow! <laughs> Loved his thoughts on soccer too, coming from someone in the same boat. Another shout out to the fine from Tom, absolutely torching the Hamilton fan that wanted to be an F one correspondent. Lastly for Dan, Philado Fishers, Philados uh, are bloody trash. And if the steam yep. bun is your only selling point, and if your steam. Bloody hell, if the steam bun is your only selling point for them, you do realise you can ask for a steam bun for any of the Max Burgers. You can do that. Mm. Anyways, keep up the good work. Kind regards, Josh G. I want to just pre- – I have not – I didn't read that, so the all shit chair was completely <laughs> – It's amazing. Wow. Don't worry. I understand how amazing it is. Goodness me. Let's get to this last bit. It's a bit, a bit of a long one. We apologise, but we don't. We You're still here. Really. We love you. Find uh, this is – got the is, gavel or are we just wrong? Yeah, the oh. gavel's over on the dining room table out the I back. I can see it from here. Can you see it, Hammer? I can. The Dan Smith designs. Right. Dave so, Smith. Sorry, not Dan Smith. Yeah, that's right. So this is where we do find you right into the podcast. You can jump onto uh, the website, backchatpodcast.com.au. There's a little form there you can fill out send a fine send it to hamish send it to dan send it to charlie send it to uh, demo send it to scoey send it to anyone involved with the podcast send it to yourself send it to your mum. send it to your girlfriend send it to your boyfriend i don't care find someone find yourself who cares we do it for charity we send some of the money to all three of these charities as well as get around the team long live jace nelson for blood donations men's talk oh, shit, yeah. saber soccer to sarcoma let's get into it it's fine time hammer Mr. Beta finds Will, Dan, and anyone else that could be involved $5 after recently jumping on the Patreon bandwagon and was needing a restock of shelters. I was disappointed to not find a discount code on the Patreon page for shelters. Yep. Will also find myself for not joining the Patreon page earlier Mm -hmm. as I've listened to the Backchat 2.0 series from the start. Keep up the great work, team. Also talking about shelters. When's the next beers with Backchat? I know there's no replies, but... It is a good point yeah, to no, mention. No, no, you Excellent can point. Well. Back chat champ will get you ten percent off any beers, any merch on shelter. Wow, not just for the wow patrons. Way. You should have left that one for the patrons, shouldn't you? <laughs> Devastating. Can we edit that out or you're gonna have to you're gonna have to cut that out, Dan. So we've edited something out there and you can hear right. it on Patreon. <laughs> you can hear, you can hear it on hear, Patreon. You can, you can hear what the code is on Patreon. Yeah, Scully, what's well it done. Damien, can you write down the time code there, please? Or Charlie, thank you. Thank there you. Let's go. Is that thanks, an hour like Thanks, mate. <laughs> Jackson Rivnesh. Scoey, a.k.a. Mr. Social Media, a.k.a. Will Schofield, $3 fine. So it's a Monday night in the West. The day is winding down. I'm scrolling through my Instagram and look what pops up. Scoey at Optus Stadium with his bloody ripped jeans. What's going on? 
These jeans aren't just ripped. It looks like someone's chopped out the whole knee section for a rag or something. <laughs> Scoey, you have some explaining to do. Otherwise, take the fine. P.S. There's a conspiracy that Scoey has mega knees. This could explain <laughs> it all. Well, mega you've, knees. You've nailed it on the head there, Jackson. No reply needed there, mate. Nice. Haywood Jablomi. <laughs> I like these. <laughs> these are great. Fine, Will Scoville, three dollars. I'd like to find Will Scoville fifty cents for every time he has absolutely butchered his own saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's forward good. sell memberships, mid sell sponsorships, and backs win premiership. For fuck sake! Thank you, Haywood. Uh, Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> S Rooster. Uh, Finds Hammer, $2. Yep, Whilst I enough. agree that you never jump ship on the team that you support, please explain how Freo have any fans over 28 years old. The old, I didn't follow football before the Dockers were in the comp line is wearing a little bit thin, champion. Thin? Nothing. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but a new team on the block, that's probably the only exception. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, gay bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out too, wouldn't you? I can't. It's Gabe Itch. Gabe Itch. <laughs> Gabe Itch. Gabe Itch. Gabe, G A B E, Itch, I T C H. That's just. Finds Medibank $10 for oh. leaking everyone's snip stories and one upping Optus. Yep. That's just. Um, I'll give it to her. Uh, Jacken. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This man. is Jacken. Last all has name, to- Offer Cat. Amish, Amish special. It's all has to be the $10 same for thinking cricket is worth watching in any form that isn't backyard <laughs> beach. He's six and out for mine. Um, Checking off a cat. Lego man, first name, underscore last name. The girl at the revelry who thought I was Josh Kennedy, $5. Because of my glorious beard, she thought I was Josh, a.k.a. JK Kennedy. Was I good at footy? No. Best haul four against Pinjara Tar- Tigers, 2000. <laughs> We love that. Adam Brown. Yeah, that yeah. seems reasonable. Clean. <laughs> That's a clean name. <laughs> Scoey and Dan, $3, getting the name of a Nuffy who emailed the AFL regarding the Crows-Eagles games and getting the reply of $100 per game. It was me, you Muppets, Adam Brown. Sorry. DJ Danielson, fine. Emma Lee, health and safety officer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. $2. For making us undertake, this is a genuine fine. Sure. For making us undertake a drug and alcohol piss test in the morning after watching us come out of the toilet, fine for ten cents per minute. She had to wait until the old vessel had refilled. <laughs> maybe, maybe a note on the toilet door would have been handy before I commence my morning routine. Thank you, Emily. There you go, Emily. Cop that. That's done. That That's is dusted. Humor. Uh, please keep those names coming through for fines. We love that. Shit. Uh, we love you, Senator. We read it. Very good content section. Uh, and if you want to stick around, that's right. Patreon, our patrons, I'll tell you the shelter discount code. Yep. And yeah. we'll get the next paragraph of 50 Trays of Fries, Dan's Erotic Novel. Thank you very much for joining us for Backchat. Backchat double underscore is where you find us on socials, backchatpodcast.com.au to find all the jazz. Watch us on YouTube. Listen to us as a podcast. Thanks to our sponsors, Whippersnapper, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter, and Legal Cameras. See you next week. See you. Surely there'll be no kids walking around. Yeah, go for it. Hammer's going out to 